two-part question. Mm -hmm. Well, first, I'm going to ask a question from Brother Dan. You know, we talked about it when we first walked in. Um, he has a, uh, you be mom and chin? Yeah, right. Okay. So he has a 19-year-old daughter, or an 18-year-old daughter turning 19. Mm -hmm. And he has a 7-year-old. A 7-year-old? A 7-year-old as well. Mm -hmm. So what the court is telling him is that he has to continue to pay child support for it. 18 turn 19 year old until that 7 year old turn 18 as well. Um, so, what is, what's the process behind that? Like, this young lady is giving her a relationship, she's able to take care of herself, he has the insurance, and he's still, and he's still providing for that young woman as well. Right? Well, right. What, what happens is he has to file a motion with the court to modify his child support obligation. You can file your own, bro. You can file your own. You can file your own. Yeah. Actually, because one, like he just said, well, I'm talking about. I'm <laughs> joking. <laughs> One, she is already self-sufficient. She's over the age of 18. See, back then, they, well, now they do what they call step-down order. So when a child, when there's multiple kids, they're doing application for that first child, application for that second child, for the third child, lumped all together. So when that first child turns 18, that child support drops off to that second child and the third child. So those are what are called step-down orders. They're doing that now. Prior, yeah, like I said, they weren't doing step-down orders. 2019, so they wasn't doing step-down orders. So if you had two kids and they established child support based off those two kids, you're required to pay child support to that last child turns an obligation. But you do have the right to go to court and file a motion and reduce the modify, modify the child support obligation because one, it is a significant change. One of your child, one of your kids, have turned 18. Self-sufficient, not living in the household. They're, they're, they're pretty much an adult at this point. So you do have the right to do that. Don't let nobody tell you, don't, every time they talk about this lawyer stuff, you ain't gotta do it, it's pro se motion. But I'm gonna tell you this though, when you do the pro se motion, they ain't gonna give you no advice. <laughs> they ain't gonna give you no advice. Yes, sir. Part two? Yeah, part two. Okay. <laughs> on Facebook Live, so I got a question on Facebook. Yeah, you get those cards. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. the question is, you, you know, you talk about lawyers and things like that. Right. I don't know if you know about this or not, but do you know of any affordable legal services or should they just contact the Florida Bar Association? You probably can go through, um, probably, that's probably the best go through the Florida um, Bar. Go to the Florida Bar Association. You don't get they're going to help you. There's a, law refer it's a lawyer referral service. There's no agencies that's going to help you if you are a, um, if you are a, uh, uh, a respondent to a case. There is no legal services outside of any independent services that may, may as far as, like, get, get grants to help you. There, there's agencies like that. They're, they're few, few and far apart, but the Florida part is going to only be a lawyer referral service to you. That's all they're going to be. They're, that's all they're going to be. They're going to refer you to a lawyer, and they'll give you 30 minutes of free, uh, you know, free consultation. You'll get 30 minutes if you go through them, and after that, you have to pay for the services. Question: How, how does the state get away with? Uh, uh, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. How does the state get away with saying when they send you the letter, and and it really have been verified that you live there, or that you will get the letter? Well. We do verify, believe it or not, it is a verification process that we have to go through to verify that particular address. Well, you, you said earlier that um, the letter may go to an old girlfriend who may not like you and may not give you the letter, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying... Okay, well, what I, what I will give you, let me give you an example. What I mean by that is, is you haven't changed your address. Yeah, right. Your address, your official address is still that address. Okay. And that is what we consider your address. Even though no, now, you could have mail still going there. Now when you may not live there. Now when you say that's my address in reference to what's on my license or yes. Yes, okay, okay, yes. what's on my license? Yes. That's okay. normally where that's normally what we're gonna first look at, that official address, which okay. is the address on the license. If you don't like it, Jeff, you gotta change that. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we first that's what we're gonna look at. Okay. Now then we're gonna look for a certain if she comes and says, Well, I got a different address for me. We go in, we verify, we have to verify the address. Okay. And what I mean by verification, we send something to the post office. Mm -hmm. Post office says, Yes, he received mail at this address. Okay. That's verification. Okay. Alright? Yeah. Yes, sir. I come back to you. Okay, so another question from Facebook Live. 
you were saying the judge caught, it, it's, it, it's classified you as contempt. Now, for failing to pay the order. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, according to the appeals court now, the judge is supposed to find out if you are able to pay that before he, they are saying you can pay it, you didn't pay it. That's your assumption. Have you went and looked to see if I could pay it? Well, again, that's something that he asks questions. Exactly. But yeah. he asks you, what, what do you have in your pocket? Exactly. That's all they ask you, what do you have? They don't say, well, I mean, no, look, I ain't been to pay this because I had to do this right here. I haven't had the money to do it because this happened. Well, you still had obligation to pay it. Okay, but I have to tell you I wasn't able. Okay, still. You, can you cover this money? No. Okay. Contempt. Which is, is, is not legal because I'm telling you, according to my finances, <laughs> living, whatever, okay, I have, I'm not able to. And according to the appeals court, because they did it before, the guy got, but they had to let him go. And they couldn't hold him against that because he was not able to pay that. The, the purge. That he wasn't able to pay the purge. I, I've seen that, yes. But like I said, that's something they establish when you come to court. Your ability to pay and not pay. So, so the, question, the, question, the, the question just simply becomes this. Um, anytime you're able, anytime a judge is able to put you in handcuffs and put you in jail, it is considered a criminal matter at that point. Because you can't go to the, the uh, uh, you can't go to the, uh, um, uh, not the prosecutor's office, but the, uh, um, uh, the, 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 not the attorney's office, but the, the um, when, they, when you, who will give you free, a free attorney, I'm sorry. Uh, legal aid? Not legal aid. Um, work for, they, 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 the um, public defender's office. office. You can't go to the public defender's office and, and they will represent you. They won't represent you at all because they consider that a civil matter. But you can't be locked up for a civil matter. So it becomes, you, you've, turned, you, you've, take, you've taken something for a civil matter. That's not true, bro. So, it's, it's, so what civil matter you locked up for? It's civil contempt versus criminal contempt. Okay, okay, there's two different things. The civil contempt is where you're ordered to pay, you refuse to pay, whatever the case may be. They can do that until you do come up with the money. Okay, criminal perfect. contempt is busting out in court, cussing them out, blah, blah, blah. When that's you do civil contempt. That. That's, that's criminal. Okay, that's that, criminal. I'm, I'm just... Going through litigation, reading on it, that's, that's right. what, what, what the two differences are. Civil and criminal contempt. One, one is civil contempt, one is criminal contempt. Okay, now according to your constitutional rights, whether they're civil or criminal contempt, and you actually, get, you actually can be in prison for you're, it. You're talking about something you, you have, have to, to just file up through the court <laughs> yeah, and yeah. take it on up to. But you, still have, but you still have a constitutional right for legal representation according to our constitution. You have that right. If any of you want so, to look so this up, excuse why? me for a second, brother. If any of you want to look this up, this is on law.com. It explains yep. everything what you just saying. So what we're going to do, you, you know, this is this is not, this is, you know, if your case involved, either talking to Sean afterwards or if it's, you know, um, with a lot of complication and lengthy, you need to, one, either get a lawyer or, two, talk yes. to Sean afterwards. But we want to, and, and the reason why I mentioned it about the Facebook, we want people to get their question answered here tonight. You came all the way here, so we want Sean to speak to them. So that's why I mentioned that about the Facebook thing. Right. But, um, you know, we want the people here to get their question answered. And then right. if Sean decides to stay afterwards and answer other questions, fine. But, you know, if, if your case is real, real complicated, and, you know, you know Sean is, is, a, is, a, is an experienced child support, you know, um, 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 professional, and he can right. do answer what he can answer. That's it. So <laughs> that's all, because you have some people sometimes, they... You know, they want answers, so that's why they're here. And we, that's right. why we want them here. Because right. just by some of the things they said already, I'm pretty sure other people learn from other things they said. So, yes. you know, this brother here says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we want people to, to have dialogue about it so we can learn. And, um, you know, so we might get our questions question answered without even asking them right. sometimes. So I want people here to feel free to ask what they want to ask. For sure. Anybody else have that? <laughs> yes, ma'am. If both parents are living in the same state with the children and they have joint custody, can those kids leave that state without the consent of both um, parents? That's that's a legal attorney question there. That's not the department of residence. That's something that uh, the attorneys have to establish. You have to go to an attorney to establish that. Because one, if they have, I think it depends on who has primary custody and, and so forth. Um, that's something that that's, you have to get through the legal terms to get that question asked. We can't determine 
if that key can go out of state or not. That's 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 something that we can't try. So how oh, if they collect the child support, mm -hmm. it goes to that parent in the other state. It can't go to that parent in the other state, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If if there's especially if there's an order already established, yes, it, it will go to that parent in the other state. Yes, ma'am. It will go to that. If that mother, say for instance, this child support started in Orange County. And that mother decides she got another career in Atlanta, and she moves to Atlanta. That order is still active here, and he's still obligated to make that child support obligation. Big payments we will send to Atlanta. We will send the payments to Atlanta. As long as she's cooperating with us, giving us the, her address, we will send those payments to her. How is this situation for uh, The mother gave us a trip to a million from New Jersey to Canada, right? And we got to him for two years. After two years, she showed him. She knew the case. I said, it doesn't go like that. You just showed up for two years. And this will take you like that. So you'll have to go to the sheriff or something and get some paperwork or what. She'd go back to Philadelphia, came back, and she came by the house, and we sat here and we talked. And she told me, okay, we're going to meet in the park this evening about 4 o'clock. She told me that. So I thought I was going to take the kids to the park for 4 o'clock. But I'm going to go better around. There was she and two sheriffs showed up. Because she went to court. She went to court. Went to court. Went to court. What happened? Oh, On Sunday, you showed up in court today, and the judge gave her a question. Yes, the kids. My son didn't get a letter. Because he's living with us. Is that the same? Life not the same address. All right. After that, kids come back to spend vacation with us. We were here talking to the kids. One of the kids got from there. I know why it wouldn't get us back. Because she gave the wrong address. That's that couldn't get the letter. And some other families. That's what the kid got to say. Just like that. Right. No. What happened in the case? He didn't get it. Well, and the key verified that that movie didn't put yeah. it right at us. That's something you have to, what was it, Pennsylvania? But it's not here. here. That's when the order was here? Yes. yes. That's, well, in that case, then that's something you probably need to take back to court. Your son, I guess your son would need to take yeah, back to court here. In, you know, on court. To be honest with you, that was about oh, two years ago? Two years ago? No, from 2006. Uh, I, I we had the kids, the and time. she was working. She didn't, and my son was living with us too. And she didn't pay child support or anything. She didn't give. Right. She sent them twenty-three dollars. It was their birthday, and she sent them twenty-three dollars each. Christmas, she didn't send them a Christmas card. She didn't send them a toy. Nothing. Was well, it? And I said, what, what, what should have happened if, if that's if you choose to do that as a kid? is fight that back in the court system. That's something that has to go through the court system, not through the department right there. That's something that you all and your son will have to take to courts and show evidence of what action actually did happen, which was the incorrect information that happened. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you all have to take to court to get established that way, not through the department right there. Okay? Anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. I have a question uh, about um, uh, when a person receives a purge and they and they they, they have a purge mm -hmm. account and uh, they can't pay the purge and they end up going to jail to serve whatever time after they come up with the purge or the six month. Thing. Once they if they, if they say they do the six months, if they do the six months, does that purge go away at that point? Yes, it's, it's, it's just because you it wipes either it out. or it wipes the debt out. Right? No, don't wipe the debt out. It wipes out the purge balance, which means if you do the hundred and seventy nine days. You don't have to still get out and do, you pay, you don't have to get out and pay to steal the purge balance. So oh, it's an either or. The, but but the amount doesn't go away. It's still, it's still there. It's still there. Okay. Just, the the, the arrears are still there. Okay. Just the purge at that point, you're not required to pay the purge at that point if you did the whole full set. Could they come back after you again once you get out for? Again, the, the system is it's, it's an automatic system. Because what happened is you still be in charge of child support okay. while you're in jail. Even though you're in jail, you still be in charge of child support. Okay? Yes, sir? Actually, I was thinking, I think you might have just answered the question. So, say someone is in jail nine years and they're still being charged the. Uh, I'm going 
Because that's what I asked my yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the, the, your employer should know not to do that because they should take out what is only obligated for your child. <laughs> <laughs> now, if they take out more, then believe yeah. me, child support ain't gonna send it back. <laughs> oh, of course. Not. I, mean, yeah, I, I can tell you, I've, I've been on the other side of that. As an employee having to pay, it, it, they'll send you specifically if it's a you get bi-weekly, monthly, however, it says specific amount that right. you have to take out for that particular pay period. So if your company is not doing that, you need to go down to your HR department and right. speak with them because they have the order that exactly. specifically states exactly how much that's comes out pay. based on what your pay schedule is. So if they're taking out I mean, more than that, it, it, that's on them. Right. But at, at the same time, sometimes, you know, it, it's, it's a good thing because, you know, that... It puts your head a little bit. Exactly. Need a little breathing room. Right. But again, don't look crazy now. You want to <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, but I want to know if it's that, that coming from there, but it, like you say, it's coming from... We send them the order. Precisely. Precisely. It tells them if you get paid weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, monthly, annually. It just breaks it down. Like you said, it breaks all the way down. If you fit in one of those pay, pay uh, categories, that's what they're supposed to follow. Now, if they decide to follow, sometimes it's just a system automatic thing where it won't catch that third, that fourth paycheck, that third, fourth, wow. the, the right. additional third right. paycheck. Right. It don't catch it because it's automatic. But if you know it's one, and me being a person that's paying child support, yeah. hey, it's, a, it's three paychecks, y'all make sure y'all get this right. right. But if you don't do it, guess what? It's going wrong. I got you. It's going wrong. See, the key, the key to a lot of this stuff, um, gentlemen and, and ladies, you know what's going on with your child support case. If you know you got an extra paycheck for that month, uh, coming up month, and you know it's coming, and, and they, they taken out prior, but last year's in the past, but okay, I know I got this one. If you don't say nothing, again, that's just going to be another payment came in the system. That's true, but I'm saying, like, like you're saying, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of times when we call. Yeah. Right, but again, when you're calling us, all we're going to say is, is that, that's true. I'm hoping they're telling you that's your employer. Right. You need to contact your HR. It, it, no, you don't always do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm not being funny because, I mean, seriously, seriously, I mean, you, you, we come to the office and you do, sometimes you get, a person with uh, a fair attitude. Yeah. Sometimes you get a person with a jacked up attitude, and they don't care what you what you know. And you look at them, and you you know you looking around trying to keep your composure <laughs> because the security guy will be looking at you. <laughs> you know what you gonna create more for? So you see him like, really? so I mean, you, really, you, some of, some of the people in your office need an adjustment. Really, I mean, you know, so we already in a you know, in a book. <laughs> right, we already in a, in, a, in a position as a, and we come in there, so we're trying to get some, you know, understanding. And then when you you want to go all small and say something like, you know, such and such, you owe them anyway, once you just pay up. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, there, there is a situation where that does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't. But what you probably need to do again is, hey, I need to speak to someone. Is there, a, is there a person that you call out complaint? Put it. I mean, well, no, no, no. You know, I don't mean call you. I want to put it in writing because see, one of my point is Absolutely. I call you as a manager. Well, we'll take care of it. There's no, no man. Don't worry about it. He going but don't worry about it. It's it's I don't have to do it now. You you can't make a complaint. I mean, you know, it's yeah. like me telling you something. You say I take care of it. How do you make? As soon as you walk out the door, it's done. How do you make? How do you file a complaint? Uh, yes. whenever, when you have a person that, like he's saying, with a really bad attitude, is at really at that point you're supposed to speak to a manager. You ask them to speak to a manager. To a manager okay, so the complaint is actually write the verbally, write the verbal. And, 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 and we do have a form for you to write a verbal. Okay. okay. So we right. do have a form to write a verbal. I'm saying they, they don't let you. They have funky attitudes. They take total advantage of the fact that these mothers are in a hallway, and then they'll try to get to a supervisor or a manager or whatever. And they can't get to one. Oh well, he ain't, ain't, they on lunch, or they ain't here, or I'll take the next one. And that makes it even worse. If you're already frustrated and you're trying to get something taken care of, and then you got to deal with.